this is a beautiful place. I mean, you don't often see this style here in Phoenix. This is the style that the people who moved here brought with them. They wanted to recreate Indiana in the middle of the desert. They wanted to recreate Minnesota in the middle of the desert. Hi, I'm Nathalie Gage with Phoenix TV. We're here at the Smurthwaite House, which is a rare Queen Anne shingle style home right in the city of Phoenix. Structures like this are few and far in between here in the city limits. But today we're gonna take a tour of this house and get a little bit of its history. Come on inside. Are you Judy Smith and Vivia Strang? Yes, we are. Thank you so much for meeting me. You're welcome. Judy and Vivia are from the Pioneers Cemetery Association, and they have been kind enough to meet us here today to discuss the history of this house and give us a little tour. Judy, please lead we'll the way. We'll start right here. This room was the parlor. It would have been used primarily for your guests. Uh, this was a prim and proper era. Your guests would be down here. Uh, this is where you would put your finery. The furnishings of this house are of the period. We have been very, very fortunate uh, by some of our members donating this lovely settee and the matching barrel chair. This house was built in 1897, which is the very end of the Victorian era. Uh, this house, this size, this era, would have been one of the more elite homes. And in 1897, we were not a state yet. People were moving here from back east, from the Midwest, and start over anew. That's how we got this house, the Rawson house, several other homes. The Smurthwaite house is significant for its style. The first level of the home is brick, and the second level is wood framed but its roof is arguably its most unique feature. The shingle style is not common here, and actually uh, it was developed you know, along the East Coast um, back in the 1880 period. And so as architects and people moved here, they brought those ideas with them. Wood shingles aren't always the best material in a desert environment, so I don't think that you'll see many of them built in the future. The the next room here would have been the bat parlor. This is where your family would meet. Uh, if you had had a TV at this time, this is where the TV would have been. There is a pocket door here. This would enable you to separate your finery from where the family would be. The, the family that lived here, the patriarch was Captain Trustrum Connell. Okay. And this is the gentleman here. He was a Union Corporal. Mm -hmm. He was awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor. He captured a flag during the Battle of Sailor's Creek. He was also uh, the uh, Wells Fargo agent for Phoenix. The original homeowner was Dr. Perman. He auctioned off the house after moving his family to LA, giving Connell the chance to procure it. The house was purchased by Captain Connell in 1903 as a single family dwelling. Uh, he and his wife Anne, his daughter Caroline, and later his granddaughter uh, Carol Ann. They all lived and they all died in the house as well. Caroline was married in the house. Um, later the granddaughter was born here in the house. The, the name of the house is the Smurthwaite House. It was named for their daughters husband, Charles A. Smurthwaite, who was a mining engineer, who did a lot of traveling. So the family was not a very close family because of his position in his job. This era, because it was just at the very end of the Victorian era into the Edwardian, the lace curtains, the lace tablecloths, we're still into some of the darker paint colors but if you notice, the color in the parlor is much lighter. This is a built-in uh, china cabinet. The dishes that are in there of the era. Because this was the Victorian era, you could not have a Victorian home without a fern. fern. Yes. 
Uh, the paintings and prints are of the era. Victorians were into botanicals and flowers. Mm -hmm. So if you'll notice, almost all of the, the pictures in this house have something to do with uh, botanicals. So um, would that have been a formal dining area? This house was originally going to be a boarding house. Okay. So it would not be very, very formal. Dr. Perman is the gentleman who uh, commissioned uh, Creighton to come and build the house, and they were going to uh, have it built as a income property. And that's why some of the second floor doors and windows and things are a little bit above what was the normal. A lot of times in a Victorian home, downstairs looks great, but the second floor is just bare bones, and they spared no expense upstairs. He had it for a couple of years, and then they sold the property. The work of Canadian architect James Creighton was very popular in the territorial days of Arizona. But the Wild West has long since been domesticated, the city of Phoenix continues to grow, and the house's original location at 7th and Fillmore has since moved 26 blocks to 13th and Jefferson. The location moved, and that isn't always a good thing for a historic building because the setting changes, but the setting on 7th Street had changed so much with the road widening and with commercial encroachment coming there that it was actually moving it over to Jefferson Street by the cemetery actually helped restore some of that setting in terms of the large setback and the landscaping. Let's go upstairs. You mentioned that this was all original wood here in this house. It's lovely. These staircases, uh, I think, are kind of a central piece of, of a lot of these styles of homes. Am I correct? Absolutely. This bedroom, this was still the armoire period. Okay. There were very few houses built with closets. And this one has two. So I like the uh, washing tables with the basin. This entire bedroom suite mm -hmm. was donated by one member. Mm -hmm. And it's unusual to have the entire suite together. You may recognize this or this style. Yes. This woman, her name was Maude Humphrey, was one of the very few women at the turn of the century that was able to support herself as a graphic artist. And this was her maiden name, Maude Humphrey. Maude Humphrey. She had continued her career when she married Mr. Bogart. Her son was obviously Humphrey Bogart. This is one of the transom windows. Mm -hmm. They are located above each door. Mm -hmm. So this was their means of getting uh, the, the circulation in the house. This is the yes. back stairs. Yes. And, and behind you would have been the maid's quarters. Can you imagine getting up before the sun came up with a kerosene lantern in your hand? That's a death holding trap. Holding your skirt up. Yes. I don't think I would have lasted long no. as, uh, <laughs> as the hired help. Caroline and Charles divorced, but the name Smurthwaite stuck with the house. The only people who actually lived here were the Connell family, who married into the Smurthwaite family. So there's only been two families that lived in this house. That was the way it was for women of that era. They continued with their married name the entire time till her death. Caroline and her daughter continued to live in the house and they collected native art pieces. They also had the first uh, gift shop and antique shop in the Arizona Biltmore. After they uh, moved from the Biltmore, they brought their merchandise to the house and they had a gift shop here in the house. Carol Ann never married, so there were no heirs. Her will stated that the house was to go, she wanted to continue to have it open to the public and the city of Phoenix took possession of the house in 1984. A caretaker lived in this house until 1994, when at that point it was picked up and moved to the present location at 1317 West Jefferson, conveniently located next to the seven original cemeteries in Phoenix. It is now called the Pioneer Military Memorial Park.
Phoenix doesn't have many territorial houses left, so it's important to preserve them. As with any museum, a house museum, or nonprofits, it really is a challenge these days when you rely on volunteers and organizations and you don't have city staff to support those efforts, uh, then they're not always able to remain open as much as the public uh, may like. The house is open, the Smirthwaite house is open. Uh, every Thursday, we do the first floor and the second floor. You can book a special tour, but right now we only give the tours on Thursdays. It really is part of the job of the Historic Preservation Office to work with the community and make sure they're aware of these historic resources. And I think once people have a good understanding of their significance and importance, then they will help support initiatives that help uh, fund some of those projects.